Oh, welcome back there, partner. We are in, in this town of Edgewater in the Let's Play uh, The Outer Worlds. Uh, yes, we've got a job to get uh, the power diverted uh, from away from a botanical settlement because apparently we can see the power regulator there. But there's people living there. And those are, might not be bad people. So, Pavati here, our new uh, friend, has asked us to first speak with a vicar before we go and handle this matter. So, I guess we'll do that. And according to things, this is the church. I've always felt weird in here. It's too clean. I also think we'll put these subtitles. I already put the subtitles on for dialogue. I think we'll also put it on for uh, audio. I guess I'll also put it on for box, which is just in the world things. All right. This is a very nice looking church. I like the design of this. Very lovely. Guessing we shouldn't... Oh! Uzi Vile. Apparently we are just allowed to take that. Thank you, uh, church of whatever denomination this might be. I guess this is the vicar then. Nice room. Yes, what is it? You're an outsider. Fantastic. Vicar Maximilian de Soto at your service. Or Vicar Max, if you're the sort who prefers brevity. And Ms. Holcomb as well. How rare to see you out. And with a complete stranger. Curious. Just tagging along, Vicar de Soto. Don't mind me. I so rarely get new people to talk to. Mm -hmm. Name your poison, anything at all. Spiritual counseling, this season's tossball predictions, the quickest way out of town. Poison, I thought this was not the cantina. So what sort of spiritual advice do you offer here? They who are not satisfied with their work are satisfied with nothing. No. How about, um, work fortifies the spirit. True exhaustion awaits idle hands. Ehoo. Seriously, that is what you're selling here? Selling? No. It is free for all who seek it. I'm sorry you don't find these tried and true words of wisdom to your liking. No, it's more like we're paying you with our souls uh, for the privilege. All these platitudes about just enjoying your work. Have you looked around recently? Have you? These people need something, anything they can grasp to survive. Delving into the metaphysical minutiae of the grand plan would be nonsense to them, if not worse. I'm... <sighs> My apologies. The townsfolk are having a tough time of it, and it's been difficult for me to enrich their lives. They are good people. It is just... <sighs> difficult to reach them. Well, yes, with this type of nonsense, why, why would you bother? So, Pervati wanted me to talk to you when, when Risk asked us to do something. But what? I thought you would talk to him. You wanted to speak to me, Ms. Holcomb? Every time I've tried to engage you in conversation, you look at the floor, answer in single words, and slink away. I can't imagine what would be so grave as to drive her to my mission. What has Mr. Thompson asked you to do? Apparently to cut off power of Edeline's deserters. Depriving them of safety from the marauders and wildlife. I can see why that troubles you. Miss Holcomb has a soft heart. Always has, if you believe the talk. Mm-hmm. Well, that's nice. What do you think about Edeline's group then, uh, Vicar? They rejected the order of society and live beyond the walls so thoughtfully provided by our Spacer's Choice patrons. Does that strike you as a responsible life choice? I don't know. Apparently I don't have the intelligence for this, what a shame. So what do you advise then? Assuming your goal is to save as many as possible, then you should bring everyone together. Send the power to Edgewater, and convince the deserters to return to the Fold. I see. Well, that would be lovely, but is that even possible? 
Not if things are left to stand as they are. If you don't mind a bit of unsolicited advice, be cautious on your way to the geothermal plant. It is not as safe as you might assume. I was not assuming anything. What was that? One of the reasons I transferred here was to fulfill my duty in hunting down banned heretical texts. I happen to know such a book is, as we speak, tainting a collector's library in Emerald Vale. However, the collector's residence lies outside the town's walls. My retrieval efforts have been thwarted by marauders who have overrun the property. Should you fare better than me, I'd pay a handsome sum for the book. Heretical books. What would a vicar be after heretical books? But first, a handsome sum, you say. Tell me more. It's a handwritten journal. A faded blue cover with the name M. Bakonu handwritten in the lower corner. I'll mark where I saw it on your map. Assuming you're serious? Oui. But why would the vicar want banned heretical books while they are now rotting away after the outside of the hands of anyone? I just want to keep the writing out of layman's hands. It wouldn't do for such information to fall into public consumption. Mm-hmm. Seems to me that the authorities would be interested you're after such a heretical book. But I need to know more about the book before I agree to this. It is not only a beautiful relic of a bygone time, it's also the thoughts of an early thinker on the nature of man's place in the cosmos. Not many in this colony could understand its true value, should they ever read it. Alright, seems you have an appreciation. I'll look for this book. Thank you. If you retrieve it, you can always find me here. Oh, and with that, we'll really level up. How nice. Even not before, we might have gotten... Oh, wait, you can't upgrade intelligence after characterization. Never mind. Right then, so... Once again, we get a bunch of skills. Mm-hmm. So I think we should at least put three in here so we can get engineering up to 20. That's good, that's good. Oh, so yes, let's put that to 20, that's good. And the last three skills, can we get anything? No. I'll put it in stealth then. And that's another level up. Right then. Off towards more towards this western town. We still need to collect some debts apparently. So let us see who uh, is still wanting. You think corporate's ever gonna visit? I'm not holding out hope. So let us actually Put some help from the journal in there. Uh, small grave matter. Yeah, let's set that as our searcher so we see where we have to go. 37. He is, that person is close. It's inside this house. Ah, oh, hello. Yes, Mr. Thompson. I'm fine, Mr. Thompson. Never been healthier. Uh-huh, not Mr. Thompson. Well, uh, did, uh, did Mr. Thompson send you? No. Well, you tell Mr. Thompson I'll be right at my post. Tomorrow. Uh, bright and early tomorrow. Because I'm definitely not plagued. As spry as a spring chicken. <laughs> That's old Abernathy. Tell me, what has got you so nervous? You some sort of wandering alienist? Walking into a man's own domicile, pestering him No, I've not found the alien to do it with. No, I'm positive you mentioned something about being plagued. You don't know that. I could have been saying anything. Maybe I said vague. You no, my ears are good. sound a mite strange when you're sick. Wait, no. Oh, damn it. Okay, listen. Maybe I am feeling a little under the weather, but I swear I'm on the mend. Please, don't tell the constable. You could put a sign on your door or something, or at least cover your mouth. And become the town pariah? 
I'm already the oldest worker in town. I don't need to give him another reason to avoid me. Hey, you're hale and healthy and possibly for hire, oh, ain't you? Yeah. Uh, do a good turn for an expiring old man? Depends on what do you need. Couple hours out of your day and some light second story work. That's all. There's a cache of anthracillin tucked away in the old community center. Powerful stuff. Stronger than what we got, anyway. I need you to break in, nab that medicine, and bring it back to me. Uh -huh. Not so fast. I have some questions about this job first. I'll do what I can. I assume there's gonna be guards. You will not find any guards within sight of that old place. Marauders, on the other hand. Ah, okay, I can shoot those. What can you tell me about these marauders? I have it on good authority. There's a gang of them squatting there. I advise stepping softly. Or just carrying a big gun, I know the phrase. And you can't buy some medicine because you're too poor, I assume? I tried medicating myself with Adrena time. Didn't do much for me, as far as I can tell. Anyway, I can't just buy medicine. Distribution of medicine is strictly prohibited to any workers beneath the acceptable margin of health. Company policy. Eh, uh, wait. In other words, the company won't treat you because you're already sick. More like the company won't treat me because I'm not healthy enough. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've heard enough. So you'll do it then? Sure, I'll do it. You oblige me with your haste. I think I feel the plague spreading. Oh, Lord, it's in my spleen now. I can Just feel don't it. spread it to me! Anyways, I also need to collect your graveyard site fees before, you know, you keel over. Silas knows, doesn't he? That's why he sent you. That's why he wants me to pay up. He knows. Look, I got my grave site fees right here. See? I'm good for my word. Get me that medicine, and I'll see to your payment. All right, fair enough. I'll leave you be then. You're making a mistake working for Abernathy. Oh, why is that? Excuse me, I'm Esther Blaine, Spacer's Choice Actuary. I overheard your talk with Abernathy. I hope you're not thinking about getting him that medicine. Abernathy is a well-known hypochondriac. Anthracillin is wasted on him. You're better off selling it to me instead. He's got the symptoms of something. You're saying he's a psychosomatic? All I'm saying is Abernathy's worked in this town longer than some of us been alive. How do I put this gently? He's, uh... He's got a lot of cobwebs up in his attic. And what do you need... do you need it for then? I probably shouldn't tell you. Don't want you implicated for what I'm trying to do. Let me worry about what I'm implicated in. I like getting implicated in some very hot situations. All right. Here's a summary. A lot of sick people in this town, and we don't have the medicine to treat them all. Can't reach out to corporate without crossing a river of red tape, so I'm reaching out to you. Hmm. So you need someone to smuggle medicine for you under the table. Something like that. Look. I'm not in the habit of law-breaking, but sometimes you've got to do the wrong thing for the right reasons. All right. I'll think That's about all I can it. ask of you. All right, so counter-offer. So, well, quite a list of things to do. Let's see, any other graveyard fees we can collect here in town? I think there's one over there. Also might want to have some word with Mr. Thompson, honestly. So people are apparently in the cannery. Right. I want to hear more about what's been going on in this town from the horse's mouth, as it were. So that's a small factory. Has anyone seen me here? I don't think anyone sees me here. Especially that heavy ammo. Oh dear, we need that. We only have 10 shots and some of the better guns require that heavy ammo. 
Anyone watching me? I'm gonna risk it. Look it. Yes, I got it! Hurrah! And a plasma cutter. Sounds like a cool weapon. Don't mind me, just sneaking around for no apparent reason. I think we can leave the salt too now, as we know there's no salt too there in there from Thompson's verb words. It's something else, as they say. Yeah, that's not Saltuna. That's Rat, basically. Sprat is even just it's two letters off. No, they're very huggable. Still wouldn't want to eat them. Lost and found. Found. One left hand severed at risk some bone damage. This is the second unscheduled amputation in this in many months. Please exercise caution safety around the machine. Lovely! Do you employ children here to get the cotton out of the weavers as well? Hello there! Oh dear, I really hope that fellow leaves. Because, oh, such tasty, tasty ammunition! And adrenals and stuff! Come back here later when there's no one around. Loose lip, <laughs> pink slips. Oh, so we can get in here. Probably from the back. Okay, let's see what we can do. This just goes into the kitchen, I assume. No, these are the bathrooms. What do we have over here? Ooh, heavy ammo, and no one around to see it! It's mine! Second floor, okay. That machine does not look good. Ah, there's a power converter, but yeah, I'm guessing we better not grab those. Or else we go buzz buzz clack dead. Harry, geothermal facility. Please just show geothermal. Best you can afford. Because we shouldn't disengage the power regulators just yet, no. So that's the power supply room. I still want to get in here. Looks like a fancy pants storage room. How could we maybe get in there? Ah, nice exit door. Only you can protect fourth quarter profits. I don't think that's how the phrase is supposed to go. Let's get him up here. Ah, here's a person. Hello. You the new worker? Whatever. Make it quick, tenderfoot. I'm busy. My foots are indeed quite tender, young lady, mademoiselle. I'm guessing you're the foreman here? Foreman Granger. Mind those words don't come out of your mouth unless preceded by yes or right away or thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm here for your gravesite fees. I'm here to collect. Shit. 
Silas still on about that? Here, take the fees. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Reed I was late on my payment. These aren't papers signed in your name, though, and you don't look all that dying or dead. Because they're not my fees and not my gravesite. Guy I worked with shot himself. I paid the bill. Oh, uh, that's awfully kind of you. I could do without the sarcasm. Wasn't acting out of the goodness of my heart. I wasn't being Law sarcastic. requires delinquent gravesite fees to be paid by the deceased party's closest living relative, which meant me. Shame, though. Eugene was a good worker. Hmm, you said this guy shot himself? Woke up one morning and put a round through his upper story. Can't imagine why. The kid was doing all right at his desk. I we can... all thought he was an upstanding receptionist. I can figure Just some between reasons. the two of us, I'm pretty shocked his weapon didn't misfire. Spacer's choice handguns aren't the most reliable. I'll keep that in mind. Must be awful tough losing a family. Do you require comfort? Eugene wasn't family. Oh. Thought you said you were the closest living relative. Yeah, I was the closest living person relative to his body at time of death. I'm the one who found him, you see, so I pay the fines. Ah. Suicide's a crime. The legal term is irreparable damage to company property. What Eugene did to himself was vandalism. Well, that's some uh, pretty, uh, pretty fanatical vandalism you have to go through with that. What are you going to do? Arrest this corpse? When one of your workers commits a crime, the entire town pays for it. In other words, Edgewater would have been penalized pretty hard. Whatever Eugene was worth as an asset, we would have had to pay out of pocket to Spacer's choice. Would have, which assumes you didn't. Look around. Edgewater ain't exactly swimming in luxury. We can't afford to pay the body price of a suicide. All I know is Silas asked me for Eugene's gravesite fees, which means he was approved for burial, which means his papers went through, which means the town's in the clear. Hey. I'm just glad to put this whole ugly affair behind me. Eugene can rest his bones in peace, and the rest of us can get on with our own lives. Well, that's all pretty horrible. I'll let you get back to work. Oh, yes. Almost this stupia indeed. Man. So far there's no one here to watch us. Hello, Lockpick. Thank you. Right. Let's check her messages. See if there's anything good in there. Treatment contagion. Medical for his merit base. Circumstances we do this together. Oh, dear. Hack that stuff. Theodore buried last night, redusted his death quarterlies. We not to report his death in our quarterly, sounds fair to me. Now that's all pretty horrible. Ooh. Stuff! Ooh! There's stuff up there! Mr. Agard, would you mind leaving? So, if we jump to the other side, we should be able to grab that crate. Ah! No one watching, yes? That one's a bit too close. I'm gonna wait till he leaves. Bye bye, asshole! See right. I'm not going to steal salt tuna. I've seen what goes in there. That's not. That actually is uh, like you should pay people to steal that. There's no one up here, so let's go to this room. Ooh, free stuff. I don't know what everything was that we picked up, but uh, gotta make it quick if we want to do a finish our looting on time. Engineering volume 2. Booze. Oh, I 
guess we'll take that. So, what's in this terminal? Nothing of interest. Okay. Well, I think we have one more person we're going to have a chat with in town. And then next episode we'll leave town to go hunt down a whole bunch of items and stuff outside the town. So where is... I think he's over there. Yes. Oh, something else popped up. But no, this one's first. And it's the last of our graveside feast. Oh, I cut my own hair. But Conrad sells real good disinfectant. Uh-huh. Uh, do you really cut your hair? I have my doubts. Hello there, comrade. Please don't touch anything. Your hands are probably crawling with germs. I don't know if Physical germs Physical hygiene crawl. recapitulates moral hygiene. Cleanliness is next to lawfulness. I'm not quite sure. Do all your haircuts uh, come with a free lecture? We don't believe in free anything here in Edgewater. We're a spacer's choice company. I'm Conrad. You will report to me if your hair fails to meet spacer's choice aesthetic standards. You will also report I to me in the event of your death. Standards. Whereupon I will and clean ladies. and prepare your remains for interment. Prepare my remains for what? Burial? Burial. In the unfortunate event of a fatality. It's what a barber does. We make you presentable. Mm -hmm. Speaking of burials, I'm Silas here to send me to collect your fees. Ah, gravesite fees. Silas and I had talked about this at length. I thought I'd made it clear my pecuniary situation precludes the necessary restitutions. You can use all your fancy words as you like, but uh, you're broke, you're broke. As broke as pie crust, friend. Bitless, indigent, destitute. I simply cannot afford it. I am a blemish on the prosperity of our fair settlement. When I expire, I expect Silas to toss my body into a ditch. It's not too different from the graves I've seen after out of town, really. It's quite a bit of drama there, comrades. You should uh, do some audition. Thank you, no. I despise the cereals. Tell Silas I can't afford to pay. And that I fully expect to have my medical rights revoked for this dereliction. With my apologies. Hang on, hang on. Medical rights? Some time ago, I fell ill with the plague. By the grace of the law, and through my own hard work, I'd proven worthy of treatment. Frankly, I don't imagine I'll earn that right a second time. The barber work hasn't been profitable, you see. I've had to keep this old place running with my own savings. Just give uh, Silas an I owe you, then you can get the money later. You're not dying yet, are you? Not a bad idea. But I'd need some kind of collateral. My pair of lucky clippers! No, that won't do. Your idea intrigues me, but I'm afraid I don't have anything to give Silas. I'm open to suggestions. I'll, uh, I'll let you think on this, uh, and I'll let you know if I think of anything. Much obliged. Alright, so another job. Find something uh, Conrad here can put up for collateral. And yes, I think uh, the next one we can leave this town. We'll see I. Don't go knocking your work. So, uh, well, this has been another episode here in the town of Edgewater. More adventures soon to come. So until then.